الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين السلام عليكم this is Imam Ibrahim Abdul Rahim uh, back with you again today I'm the uh, resident Imam of Toledo Masjid of Al Islam and I'm also the Islamic chaplain uh, Muslim chaplain that is for uh, the Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections at several institutions throughout the state of Ohio. Uh, we've been talking uh, about uh, Al-Islam, a leadership paradigm, and we mentioned before that Allah instructs Prophet Muhammad to read. That's, that's, this is his first command, his first revelation. This is the first word that's coming to Prophet Muhammad the prayers and the peace be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we mentioned that Allah says in the Quran, not only to read, but he says, read in the name of your Lord, your guardian Lord. Ikra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insan min alak, ikra wa rabbuk al-akram. To read in your name, eat, read in the name of your guardian Lord who, who created, created, created everything, a khalqa kulli shay, we say, created everything. And then he says, he comes, he says, again, to read, and you will find that your Lord is most generous. He created man from a clock, something that clings, and if you keep, you will find, if you keep, if you keep going back to the source, you will find that Allah is extremely generous. <clears throat> and we say that this is saying that Allah is asking us to look into what he created and engage it so as to discover and uncover that which is your inherent right. Your, your inherent right is to be a creature of knowledge, to be a creature of, sus of substance. This is asking you to establish yourself as a thinking, as a thinking being, because reading leads to substance and honor. A thinking being requires information. They require, we require guidance to complement our thought processes. And that is, this is what leads to our inherent nobility. As we discover Allah's generosity, we come in contact with our nobility. Coming in contact with it gives us cause to establish it and enhance it. However, without guidance, we will corrupt it. Is that not what is already apparent in the world at this time, if we don't have proper guidance, we can corrupt the world with our knowledge. Adam is the first man to receive proper guidance, divine guidance. This proper guidance given to a being designed to be able to analyze the guidance and accept it or reject it. Adam is what we call a sentient being. The human being is a sentient being one aware of his or her existence. This being is specially enhanced, especially enhanced in that this being can engage with Allah created and improve upon the circumstances that present themselves in the life cycle to the point where the circumstances of life can be constantly improved upon. A being able to reject Allah's guidance and see the consequences of it leads one to have greater faith. Being able to reject Allah's guidance and see the consequences of that rejection leads us, especially us that are Muslim, to have greater faith and confidence in whatever we're being guided by. Since this is so, then is this not the plan of Allah? Had Allah not so willed this to be the case, it wouldn't be as so. This is the role we see in the potential of our first, our first man, Adam. The angels see a problem for such a being. However, Allah has knowledge unlike any other. The angels see a problem and the jinn become envious. Allah says he taught Adam the names of everything and he showed them to the angels and he said, tell me, these names if you're truthful. This is what Allah mentioned to the angels. Here we see Allah establishes the foundation of the human being. His foundation is established in the fact that Allah taught him. Allah establishes him in knowledge and that knowledge gives him stature, nobility, 
prestige and honor. Allah makes Adam a being of greater substance and that makes him a leader. So Al-Islam, we say a leadership paradigm, you know, you know, a leadership paradigm, you know. And so leadership is, 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 is extremely important in our way of life. And even in our prayers, we have uh, the person out front, we call the imam. Someone has to lead the prayer. You know, we just don't have prayer. We have someone that also leads us in prayer. And if we pray by ourselves, if we pray alone, then we are our leader. We are our leader in that prayer. <clears throat> so uh, Allah establishes the foundation of a human being, being a creature of knowledge, a creature of intellect. In Al-Islam, we conclude that we are, uh, to conclude that we are inherently evil or inherently bad, you know, that's counterintuitive in Islam. We don't come to the conclusion that there's an inherent evil or an inherent uh, bad from us, you know. That's, that, for us, is a form of blasphemy because Allah created everything good. In other words, to promote the idea that Allah created something and it was created bad on the wrong way is to conclude that Allah erred. Although we are to depend upon Allah for everything and seek Allah to guide us and help us in all matters, we must also read and increase our knowledge and understanding of the inner workings in Allah's creation, as well as our relationship to the creation and our role in it. Who is Adam the leader of? Adam is the leader of all he can name or give a name to. As he assigns a name, he automatically makes a record. A record allows something to be referred back to when necessary. As he refers back, he develops a plan, a strategy. His ability to reference back to something gives him insight and helps him design tools of leadership. Allah tells us about his creation, his creation being Adam's servant. And he says, Allah is he who taught, or excuse me, Allah is he who created the heavens and the earth, and he sends down water from the sky and thereby brought forth fruit as provisions for you. And he has made the ships be of service to you that you may sail through the seas by his command. And he has made rivers to be of service to you. And he has made the sun and the moon both constantly pursuing their courses to be of service to you. And he has made the night and the day to be of service to you. Allah makes Adam and his descendants to be beings of great substance and honor. We could cite many places in the Quran where Allah reminds the human being of his stature, his favor and his blessing. The average person is not conditioned to think like this, nor do we find it espoused on the many, on many Friday sermons and many Sundays in the world. This is a teaching and direction we all have to become acquainted with. It is important for all of us to speak to that inherent nobility that is in the human being that Allah created. Alhamdulillah, bismillah, rahman, rahim, ameen.